Welcome to Michael's Meanderings, Bushcraft 101. We're out here today to build a small cooking fire and we'll examine some of the tips and tricks that you'll need to make sure that your cooking fire is a successful one. As part of any fire making kit, it's important to have matches. I keep my matches in a waterproof container like this one. You can use a lighter, but I find that lighters are often uh, unreliable. I usually keep matches in my pack, but I also keep them on my person in at least one or two places. That way, if I lose one pack in the snow, I always have another for backup. Inside my waterproof container, I have the strip that's used for lighting the matches. I also keep some cotton balls that keep my matches from moving around. Also, cotton balls are useful as an emergency fire starter if you can't get your fire going. I don't use waterproof matches because I find that they have a tendency to break and they don't light when you really need them to. Also, I find that they're usually not very waterproof. I just use your standard strike anywhere matches and they seem to do the trick just fine. How you cover your hands is a surprisingly important part of making a fire in the winter time, especially when it's cold out. Gloves just don't cut it. Your hands and your fingers will get cold in the gloves and they don't give you the dexterity that you need to do the job properly. What I like to use are a good large pair of mitts, like these ones, because I know that when I stick my hands in them, they'll be roomy and they'll warm up quickly. Another thing about mitts is that you can attach them to these idiot strings. Idiot strings are exceptionally useful because you can put them behind your back and use them as a place to store your matches for when you need your hands free to handle wood or matches or other things. The first step to building a successful winter fire is the location. I've chosen a spot that's close to a good supply of firewood and is also sheltered from the wind. A fire that's built right on the snow will sink and the melting snow will put the fire out. For this reason you have to clear the snow in a large area around where you're planning on building the fire. If you can, dig right to the ground to make sure that the, the melting snow does not put out your fire. To clear the snow, I'll be using my trusty snowshoes. You can use your mittens or if you happen to have one a shovel. But for me, I find the snowshoes work best. A small pit like this one won't work for your fire. Your fire needs lots of oxygen to be able to burn properly. We're going to need to open this pit up quite a bit more. Don't be lazy when it comes to clearing your fire pit. You want to make sure that it's large enough that it can hold your fire and you all the way around in case the wind shifts and you need to move into another position. Every fire needs fuel and the better the fuel the better the fire. Some woods burn better than others. One of my preferred woods is spruce. Spruce burns very well, very hot, and very clean. You can always find good kindling, which is the wood that you use to start your fire, on the base of most spruce trees. Very, very small branches that are usually sheltered from the snow and the rain. The smaller these branches, the better. You don't have to collect them all from one tree, but rather move around to other trees and gather up a whole bunch of them. You want to gather them in your hand like this to make a bundle. I'll show you why after. Never underestimate the importance of kindling and always have more than you'll need. I have a lot more than this. This is just the bundle that I'm going to use to start my fire. Once you have your kindling, it's time to start looking for wood. Always get more wood than you think you'll need. You'll be surprised at how much you go through in the winter time. You don't need big wood and you probably don't need a hatchet to cut it. Anything thicker than your wrist is probably bigger than you need for a cooking fire. Always take dead wood if you can. I'm going to be using this tree here to gather the wood that I need for my fire. For a winter fire, I always find it helpful to build a foundation of branches that you can use for building the fire on top of. This helps to make sure that air can get to the fire, because if your fire is starved for oxygen, it's just not going to burn. There are a lot of different ways to build a fire, and this is just one approach. This is an approach that I find is usually quite successful. I take the bundle of kindling in my hand, 
and I take my match and light it. Making sure to protect the match from the wind, I hold it under the bundle of kindling and wait for the wood to light. Once the wood is caught, I move it around to make sure that it burns through and more of the sticks catch on fire. I move it to my pile of sticks and set it down. Now that my fire is burning, I take more wood in, in increasingly larger sizes and stack it on top of my kindling. Be careful when you do this. You don't want to shift your fire so that it goes out. And you don't want to starve it either. You don't want to put so much wood on that your fire isn't getting oxygen anymore. Your fire doesn't need to be big to be effective. Since you're using it for cooking, all you're really looking for are enough coals to cook what it is that you're planning on cooking, or to boil water for tea or another warm drink. Now that I've got my fire going and I'm pretty confident that it's not going to go out, I'll start putting on slightly larger pieces of wood that I know will get me some good hot coals. My fire's been burning for about 15 minutes now and I'm starting to get a nice bed of coals inside. It's these coals that provide the best heat for cooking. If you're lucky enough to have them and find some, some nice thick deadfall or even green wood is great for using a pot or a kettle to shovel your coals over to get things boiling. What you do is you take two sticks and they're going to be in a V shape. You set them downwind from where your fire is burning. Right now my fire is starting to burn that way, so I'm going to set the two sticks here and position them in the V-shape so that I can put a pot or a kettle on top. What I'll do then is I'll shovel the coals towards this end of the V so that they'll be directly under my pot or kettle. And that concludes our lesson on winter fire making. When you're done with your fire, please make sure it's completely extinguished and, if you can, scatter the ashes so it's not obvious that your fire was there. If you have one, please use a firebox because a firebox won't leave a scar on the ground like a conventional fire will. Thanks, and happy winter traveling.